Well, the deal worked out by the politicians has got us finally to Brexit phase two, transition and then the trade talks. Though Brussels officials say they're not likely to start any time soon. Given the complexities and anxieties of phase one, how are they likely to go? Our economics correspondent, Helia Ebrahimi, is here. What can we look forward to? Well, uh, Donald Tusk ironically described today's agreement, which has taken 18 months to get to, as the easiest part of negotiations. So I think we can brace ourselves for some significant hurdles. First and foremost is the agreement of objective guidelines. Now, Britain wanted these guidelines to describe the hopes of EU countries after Brexit. And today we got this two-page document. But now the EU wants more information from us in order to provide this longer final document. But we're not going to get that for months, Chris. And until we get that, we're not really going to have trade talks. And so the sequence is what? Transition talks first? Well, I'm afraid that's another ticking time bomb. And the second kind of tra uh, hurdle that we're going to face. Because whether we have a final uh, uh, Norwegian-style deal, Canadian-style deal or bespoke deal, it's going to take more than 12 months to agree. And so that's why the transition deal is so important. The Chancellor said two years. Most people think more like five years. And according to this document, in that period, almost everything stays the same. And for companies, for manufacturers, for the city, that's incredibly important. They want to see a transitional deal before March next year so that they don't have to start planning for this cliff edge scenario where they they have to move offices, pull staff, yank UK investment. But if you get through those two hurdles, then it's a clean home straight, nice gentle Brexit. Oh, well, of course, nothing straight in Brexit. Because if you get through both of those, the third hurdle is going to be the actual legal framework that underpins the withdrawal agreement. Now, we got a flavour of that by today's report, which came from Brussels and from Number 10. But that has to be translated into a legal document. And a lot of those subjects, as you were talking about earlier, are really controversial. The extended power of the European Court of Justice, the citizens' rights. You know, all of those subjects could derail further negotiations, either here in the UK or within Europe. Thanks, Heather.